The Nate Davis drama continues over at Hallis Hall. As the veteran right guard that Chicago last year signed to a three-year, $30 million contract is causing the Chicago Bears nation to become very frustrated with him, and many want the Bears to get rid of him on the roster as a whole. Yeah, the Bears could get rid of him, but what, what sense does that make? It doesn't make much. And if they do, what does that mean for the overall offensive line moving forward? Does Connor Williams make sense? Or could they consider other free agent players? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Dick Rohde, and as always, thank you for tuning in. I am back to your regular scheduled programming as I am back from my vacation. Shout out to my friend Dylan and his awesome bachelor party. And I am here to bring you now the up-to-date Chicago Bears news and updates. So today's show is, do the Bears cut Nate Davis and sign Connor Williams? I'll be talking that as it, and I'll show if it makes sense or not to cut Davis, along with who in free agency is out there besides Connor Williams. I know this is a rough patch right now for the team, as there's much promise with this young and very talented defense and the best offense offensive roster of minus the offensive line that we've had in years so we want to get things going obviously very quickly and also protect Caleb Williams but I'll break that all down for you guys and before we get more into the show I want to hear what you guys would do in this situation if you're Ryan Poles comment yes if you will cut Nick Davis or no if you want the Bears to keep him along with liking this video in order to show your support and subscribing to the channel to stay up to date on all Chicago Bears news and notifications Did the Bears cut Nate Davis instantly no terrible idea do not do that and here is why. We will owe him $12.75 million in dead cap this upcoming year if we were to cut him today, tomorrow, whenever that may happen. So we would literally still be paying him what we would pay him anyway this year. So you might as well keep him on the roster. I know that he hasn't really done much, but he has been at practice. He has been working with the team and he knows his offense. He's been working with the team the entire offseason so far, so he's up to space. Not only that, but next year, let's say this year doesn't work out, the Bears caught him. It's only two million bucks. So, you know, it's good to keep him around because yes, he isn't really there now, but he is a strong veteran. We brought him into this system two years ago because of who he can be and who he was with the Tennessee Titans. His teammates do speak very highly of him. Overall, he's a big part of this offensive line. I mean, he is a starting right guard. And he did practice on Sunday. He just left practice and didn't return. No one knows if he's actually super injured or not. I mean, he could be nursing an injury that he's had that hasn't been announced yet. And the Chicago Bears were like, hey, just do the beginning of practice today and then when you're done, let's go, you know, work on you a little bit, make sure you're up to speed. So he could be totally fine and be back at practice this week. I'm just putting that out there. Not only that, but when Davis did play for us last year, he wasn't bad by any means. His first game back, yes, not good. He gave up two sacks. But then when he got in his groove in the other nine games that he played in for the Chicago Bears last year, he only allowed two sacks, no false starts, no holding, no penalties, anything. So when he is on the field, he is one of the better guards in this league. And I am praying that he can be that for the Chicago Bears. It would be a huge help. And also our offensive line is just banged up right now. But Nate Davis obviously is the big target on his back right now. Small rant here is that he had a lot going on last year. I think the Bears very poorly managed that information. They should have kept that more private or been more publicized about it. We found out through rumors and then it was confirmed later and people were already mad. So we had a bad taste in our mouth about Nate Davis. I don't think it's fair to him. I think that he is a good person. I think that he can be a good player for the Chicago Bears team. And I'm giving him all the benefit of the doubt. So I think that the Bears just managed that poorly, and I'm hoping that this is just a small injury and he's back at practice this week. And before I get more into the show about if we should sign Connor Williams, if we do cut Nate Davis, or other free agents available if we just decide to go out and spend the money, is that I'd like to thank today's sponsor, BetUS, who is our newest partner for this upcoming NFL season. BetUS is an online sportsbook and casino where you can find so many different betting options in various games, especially for our Chicago Bears. With teaming up with BetUS, I am offering you guys a 120 25% match bonus up to $2,000 in your first three deposits. I'm telling you guys, this is a lot of fun. Like you're, you're able to gamble. You have really good betting lines. You have overall, also you're able to go to the casino, online casino. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot different than other betting apps that I've used in the past. And I really, really enjoy it. So if you guys want to get that 125% match, Go to the link in the description below right now and sign up. And if you have an account throughout the season, I'm going to be randomly giving out $25 to five people every single month. It's going to be a new person every single time. So if you have the app, you put in your money, you're going to get an extra deposit bonus. And then on top of it, I could send you more for free. It's a win, win, win for everybody. Go and download BetUS today. So do I want Connor Williams? I, 
honestly, not really right now. The 27 year old six year pro is 6'5, 312 pounds. Great center. One of the better centers over the last couple of years in the NFL. He has an 86.5 PFF grade in total for the last couple of seasons, which is insanely impressive. He's really good at staying on the field when healthy. I mean, he tore his ACL last year, which is something that you don't mess around with. He is also a penalty machine, but when he does play, People love playing with this guy. He enhances the offensive line. He's a very good player overall. I think he'd be great. And we're struggling right now with Ryan Bates and Coleman Shelton. Snaps are everywhere still. But just because we're having that problem, I don't want to go out and sign a guy that potentially tears ACL again. I mean, we already have enough injury problems as is on this offensive line. He has been injured a lot in his career as well. And on top of it, he did have a trial with the Seattle Seahawks. And that was a week ago and they didn't end up signing him after. So if he truly is one of the best centers in the NFL, like there's no competition. That's what they keep saying. Oh, there's competition at camp. We're going to see if we actually need Connor or not. Well, if he's the best, there's no competition. So, I mean, like clearly they saw something in the medical reasons. I mean, like he looks good. He looks healthy, but that torn ACL, we got to stop taking risk injuries <laughs> guys. I mean, I'm serious. So right now I don't want Connor Williams. There's a couple other guys though. I, I want to give Coleman Shelton the benefit of the doubt. I think that he is the better one. I think Ryan Bates is a better right guard, but if we do that and we do cut Nate Davis, we need people behind them. So there are a couple free agent options. I'm going to go over with you guys today. First guy I'm going to go over today is Phil Haynes, a 28 year old 6'4", 322 pound guard who had a 51.9 PFF grade. Not great. But what makes him special is that he'd be a depth piece. Like I was kind of just saying, but he knows Shane Waldron's offense. His entire career, he has worked with Shane Waldron. Aldrin, so he knows how to get the offensive line up to pace quickly. He's an instant plug and play. He can, you know, gut, be in there uh, right when we need him. He's a bigger guy. Overall, just I think it'd be a solid signing for the Chicago Bears, considering the fact that we are just struggling right now to keep guys on the field and keep them healthy. This guy knows Waldron's offense. He'd be a depth guy. He's mature. He's still young. He's big. Overall, I, I like what he brings to the table, and I think he could be a solid addition for the Chicago Bears offense from a depth perspective. I think that if we did get rid of Nate Davis, Bates would be the starting right guard, which he's an 80 PFF grade at. I think he's a better guard than the center overall anyway. But then you have Coleman Shelton. So overall, good things there from Phil Haynes. I like him a lot uh, from that perspective. But then there's another guy that has a connection too to the Chicago Bears, and that's Mark Glowinski, a 32-year-old 6'4", 310-pound offensive guard who had a 64.8 PFF grade last year, a little bit better than Phil Haynes. I, and I can work with that too, because again, he's a depth piece. He's not someone that I'm going to go out and make a starter out of the gate, but he's an experienced veteran that's reliable since 2019. He's played in 13 or more games. He just hasn't either played in games or he's been a backup. He's constantly fluxing in and about being a starter and a backup, but a very reliable player overall. Not only that, that connection, he knows Matt Eberfuss. Matt Eberfuss got to see him back from 2016 to uh, before he left to, to come to the Chicago Bears and be the head coach, he got to see what this guy was all about. And Mark was going against a very tough Indianapolis defense. And Flus got to say, like, okay, like, how am I going to get around this guy? What works? What doesn't? So Flus could be like, hey, this is the type of guy we should bring in. Clue, they know each other. Even though he was the defense coordinator, he's an offensive guy. Had to work against him every single time. So overall, good things. It's good to have a veteran on the team. We're going in the draft next year, guys, and building this offensive line. It's not going to be this year. So we just have to get through this final stretch because this team is going to be so good for so long. But that's what I'm trying to tell you guys is just get a depth piece. And I think he's one of them. Overall, don't cut Nate Davis. But I still think that we should go out and get some more free agent help. I mean, these guys just aren't staying healthy. And I really like Mark. I think that he's a solid player. I like bringing in veterans too to help with the younger guys as well. And why not? I mean, Phil Haynes too. Doesn't matter. They know the offense. That's all that matters to me. And Connor Williams, it's, it's, I'm tired of these injuries. Just stay away from the injuries. But if, hey, if we get him on a good deal, we get him on a good deal. But overall, that's today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. I apologize for not having a post-game show this past week. I will have one for you guys this week, so stay tuned for that. But thank you so much for tuning in this episode of Just Another Year Chicago Bears. Make sure you go check out BetUS in the link in the description below. And with that, thank you guys for tuning in Just Another Year Chicago Bears. My name is Nick Rohde, and as always, bear down, baby.